the most high we get up to say shema israel adonai elohei nude adonai akar hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever amen hallelujah and bless your name should ever leave and wanna go home. Yes, no. Please don't close your door on me. Bless your name. If I should go astray. Hot Samaya.
mayor. Come on now. It's a new year. I'm thanking the most high God right now for celebrating a new year and being in the place that we are in. Five, seven, eight, zero. I'm talking about the year of declaration. It's time to declare something. The decade of declaration. Oh, it's time to declare it. Come on now. It's a decade of declaration. You better speak those things as though they were not, as though they are. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Hallelujah. And when a king speaks, his word becomes the law. Y'all better start creating some laws right now. You better tell the world, I may be in this world, yeah. but I'm not of this world. You better tell the world that my God, the most high God, will shut down America. Mm -hmm. Because every knee shall bow. Yes. And every tongue shall confess that he is the most high God. Happy New Year, Doreen, Erica, Gina. Who else is on here? Happy New Year. I'm so excited right now. I begin to really think about where we are right now. Because Colorado shut down the state. What you say, Most High God? Colorado shut down the state. Do I have your attention now? Do I have your attention now? And guess what? We're going to celebrate a new year at this moment. Because I'm thankful that the Most High God will have us at the right time, at the right place, because he is the author and finisher of our faith. Yeah. If you would read Exodus chapter 12, Deuteronomy chapter 16, Leviticus chapter 23, you'll know why I'm saying Happy New Year. Oh, we're not on the world's calendar. I know they celebrate that on, you know, December 31st going on into January the 1st. Yeah. We're not on the world's calendar. We know that the new year comes 14 days before the Passover. You better read your scripture because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Because if you're not careful, you'll be on man's timing. And the most high God says, oh no, you're never on man's timing if you would read the word of the most high God. I'm thankful right now because of who he is. Hot Samaya. Five, seven, eight, zero. The year, the decade of declaration. Glory. Hallelujah. And bless his name. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that that Hebrew letter right now that's representing the decade of declaration is shaped like the mouth. And so it's telling us that we got to declare some things. Yes. Hallelujah. You better start right now today walking through your house and this shutting and telling the most high God, I shall live and not die. Yes. And this sickness is not unto death. My Lord. And as a matter of fact, you said you would keep sickness and diseases away from me. Yes. So I've got to trust in the most high God. This is my decade of declaration. Y'all should be excited today. Huh. Oh, this is the day. That the most high God has made. And I will rejoice. Yes. And be glad in it. Come on and rejoice. Come on and rejoice. You're like the children of Israel. Sitting in your houses right now. You're like the children of Israel. And guess what he gave you? He gave you an instruction. Yes. I'm coming. To deliver you. Oh come on Moses. Speak to the children of Israel. And say to them. Take the blood and put the blood on the doorpost because that is my covenant because I'm sending many plagues. And when the deaf angel come, it shall pass by you. Ah. I'm sitting in my house right now. I'm about 14 days away from, come on now, Passover. The blood is on the door because yes. I'm in covenant with the most high God. Mm -hmm. And I could hear the screams of the nation. 
as the numbers keep going up. But the death angel is passing by this house. The death angel is passing by your house, Gina Tate. The death angel is passing by you, Doreen, Erica. Come on, y'all. Wake up this morning and begin to get an understanding. Of what the Most High God is doing right now, right now. Because he's so, oh, I love him. Yes. He's still telling you if you would understand, get rid of your idols. Hallelujah. I need you to get rid of your idols. Because yes. I'm the only Most High God that can shut down your idols. Oh, your idols was uh the NBA. Oh, yeah. You know y'all missing that basketball right now. Oh, it shut down. Oh, your idols was, maybe I'll get to watch the Olympics. Oh, it's been postponed. Yeah. Shut down. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Your idols was, you know, I'm going to do that March Madness thing because I know I love myself some March Madness. Oh, shut down. Oh. I'm shutting down all your idols. My Lord. Ooh, Lord. And guess what? It's time to get your house in order anyway. It's time to get all the leaven out of your house. Because Passover is coming. And it's time to get the leaven out. Oh, you can't find no bread on the store shelves. Uh-oh, they're taking out all the leaven. Huh? What you say, boss? I got? Oh, you can't find the necessities you need. I got to shut down some stuff to let you know I am the most high. Yes. And I shall supply all your needs. According to my riches in glory. Because you're in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. King of kings. And Lord of lords. Aren't y'all enjoying this kingdom teaching? This kingdom teaching got me on fire. Oh, Lord. I'm like Jeremiah this morning. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Yes. But this morning, we're going to do an encore of the New Year's teaching so we can get that in our declaration. Because we done stepped off into a decade of declaration. And the Most High God is coming with an encore to remind you yes. that you are in a new year. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year. Hot Samaya. I am so excited this morning. I don't know what to do. I'm thankful. That the most high God would give us a, didn't it come on time though? Mm -hmm. You know, all this time we've been building up to count up Hebrews, count up. Cause we don't count down. Count up Hebrews, count up. We've been waiting all this time yeah. from March the 26th to celebrate a new year. Who knew that the state of Colorado would be shut down and we would be walking through a plague called the coronavirus and he would give us a decade of declaration. You better speak light. Huh. Oh, oh, I got some things to say. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I got some things to say to the most high God. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, first of all, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, second of all, thank you. <laughs> Oh, third of all, thank you. <laughs> I got some things to say to the most high God. Yeah. I know you are a rewarder to them that diligently seek you. Oh, Lord. I know a thousand may fall at my right side. Ten thousand at my left. Uh. But nine shall come near me. I come to make a declaration. With men, things might be impossible. Uh -huh. But with the most high God, all things are possible. I come to serve notice yes. on every pagan idolatry worship. He is the one and only. He is the Allah Ta. Yes. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is king of the universe. Baruch Atah Atonai, Eloheinu Mahalak. He is the king of the universe. Oh, Lord, I don't know about you, but I feel this unshakable kingdom that I'm in. Yeah. I'm not in the world. I'm feeling this unshakable kingdom. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you're feeling like some law-abiding citizens? Hallelujah. I am a law-abiding citizen. You want to know why? Because I love him. Oh. I keep his commandments. Glory. Come on now. Y'all get up this morning. Y'all get up this morning. Happy New Year, Mother. 
I love you. Whew. Doreen, tell mama, whoo. We going for a ride this morning, mother. We going for a ride. A Holy Ghost ride. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Come on, fire. Come on, fire. He told the Levitical priest to never let the fire on their altar go out. Yeah. What you say? He told the Levitical priest to never let the fire on your altar go out. Oh, it's burning this morning. Yeah. It's burning this morning. It's burning this morning. As we continue to lift everyone up in prayer, if there was any time to run into the Ark of the Covenant, you might want to start running now. Amen. If there was any time for you to say, you know what, I'm just going to turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You might want to do that right now, America. Because ah. every knee shall bow. I'm going to say it again. And every tongue shall confess that he is the most high God. Oh, he's the only one, a cod. He's the only one, a cod. He's the one and only one. So I'm thankful for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who gave us dominion, authority to rule and reign in the earth realm. Come on now. Y'all got to get up today and begin to say, this is my decade yes. of declaration. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do because he just keep on showing himself. He keep on showing himself mighty. Folks are running around here not knowing what's going on. And I'm saying to myself, if you serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, yes. you would say to yourself, oh my goodness, I'm sitting in the same place as the children of Israel. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm watching him shut down every idol. I'm watching him tell, you know, Moshe, go on back to Pharaoh. Tell him this, tell him, I'm going to kill a firstborn. I'm, I'm watching all of this, but we are the second exodus and we are the greatest exodus. Why you think Donald Lawrence was singing that song? This is my exodus. Come on. Leandria, this is my exodus. Thank you, Lord. This is my exodus. Oh, Lord. I'm so excited. This is my exodus. Thank you, Lord. Woo! I want to say thank you, Lord. This is my exodus. You better read Exodus chapter 12 to see where are you right now. Thank you, Most High God. All I can say is thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Bless your name. You got to read the word, y'all. It's time out for making crazy decisions. You got to read the word. Mm -hmm. Line upon line, precept upon precept. So we sitting here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We about to get the leaven out and not just out of our homes now. We ain't got much to get out because you know they ain't got nothing on them shelves. Most High God helping us out. Thank you, Most High God. We got to get the leaven out out of our physical homes. And then we got to get the leaven out of our spiritual house. You know, because in a time and a season like this, we might get the leaven of fear. Knowing that the Most High God is not giving us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind, we might have to get fear out of here. Because we watching CNN. Y'all know we watching it. We might have to, you know, get some fear out of here. We are the children of Israel. Yes. And he said he would deliver us. Yes. You know, some folks would say, oh, it's judgment day. Oh, but guess what? I'm excited about judgment day because judgment in Hebrew means deliverance. What you say? You coming to judge the world and deliver Israel at the same time? You better know what judgment means in Hebrew. It means deliverance. Oh, Lord, I've come to deliver you. Thank you, Most High God. Ooh, y'all don't even know. When you're in relationship with him, you begin to know who he is. I am that I am. Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is your decade of declaration. Y'all start sharing this video because I know we're about to do an encore on this thing, but it is so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful.
It's time for you to walk in your gifting that the most high God gave you. It's time for you to walk in your gifting that the most high God gave you. It's time to celebrate. Five, seven, eight, zero. The decade of declaration. Oh Lord, I know the, the world walking in that 2020 vision. You know, last year was the year we supposed to see the snakes in the ground. But I know right now the world walking in 2020 vision. Oh, but they didn't see this coming, huh? <laughs> Where yet? You know, all of the churches were saying, oh, this is the year that we would see 2020 vision. You ain't see this coming though, did you? Where yet? <laughs> One thing about the most high God. He goes before us and make the crooked places straight. So even though, you know, we weren't putting that 2020 out there, what we were doing was walking out his feast days. And his feast days were leading and guiding us into all truth. On the hills of Passover, I can look out the window right now and be like, yes, I'm shut in. I'm shut down because it's about to be Passover. Yeah. As he gives me a new year at the same time. Oh, this is so good. Aren't you glad you walk in the Holy Scriptures, the original? I'm talking about the original. I'm talking about walking Hebraically, thinking Hebraically, knowing Hebraically. This is a great time. I, I just, this is a great time to be teaching the Torah. Yeah. I'm so honored, I don't know what to do. You chose me. This is a great time to be teaching the Torah. My Lord. Turn back Glory. to Shuba. Back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Until we turn. Do you know repent means to change your way of thinking? I know you thought some things when you were in religion. I know you got that Western mindset, that religion mindset, that pagan idolatry worship, but I come to shut it down and give you understanding as I give you knowledge, which knowledge is information. And as I, as you proceed, you should have some wisdom to make an application. My Lord. I'm so honored to be teaching the Torah in this moment. Well, I feel like John the Baptist. You know, I'm preparing the way for the Most High God, the King of Kings. There is a voice crying in the wilderness called 5 a.m. prayer. Repent! For the kingdom of the Most High God is at hand. What you say? Repent. For the kingdom of the Most High God is at hand. Oh, Lord, come on now. There's no need to be fearful when you walk in the kingdom with a kingdom mindset and kingdom principles for kingdom living. Yes. There's no need to be afraid when he is king of kings and lord of lords. Uh -huh. I'm thankful right now that many are called, but few are chosen. I love him. I love him more today than I did on yesterday because he's doing this thing. He doing this. He is doing this thing. And I am so excited to walk in. Oh, Lord. A decade of declaration. Say that. Yes. This is a great time. Y'all talk to me. The place you in right now. Y'all might not understand it. But he said lean not to your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him. Because he is directing your path. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 16, ask for the ancient path. Uh, what you say, Jeremiah? Uh -huh. Ask for the ancient path. Yeah. You know, right now you're doing some soul searching. Which way should I go? Stand at the crossroad uh. and ask, which way should I go? And guess what? Guess what they say? We ain't going that way. We ain't going that way. <laughs> so guess what he said? Here, O nation. Ooh, what the most high God is about to do. What you say? I told you to ask for the ancient path, but you said you ain't going that way. Uh -oh. So here, O nation. Ooh, Lord. I'm about to bring disaster. 
on this world. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. But guess what? what? If you walk in it, mm -hmm. walk therein, mm -hmm. you shall find rest for your soul. I was born for such a time as this. Jeremiah 6, chapter, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Read it. <laughs> yes, Mosiah God. Pull that scripture up. Come on, this thing moving kind of slow. Ooh, where is it at? Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Because I want to read it as the word says. That was Dr. J paraphrasing. Okay. All right. I love him. I love him more today than I did on yesterday. Are y'all just as excited as me? Can y'all hear all my explanation points coming out right now? Yes. So excited. So, so excited. So it says. Ooh. What it say? Thus says the most high God. Stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old past. That's the Old Testament. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Ooh, he says, also, I have set watchmen over you. Ooh, come on, 5 a.m. prayer, being a watchman on the walls. Also, I have said watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the chauffeur. But they said, we will not hearken. Therefore, hear, ye nations, and know, O generations, what is among them? Hear, O earth. Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruits of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Ooh. Come on, Jeremiah. Hear, O oh earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba? And the sweet came from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. What y'all say? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore, thus says the most high God, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. And the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. And the neighbors and his friends shall perish. Thus says the Most High. Behold, a people cometh from the north country. And a great nation shall be rise from the size of the earth. What you say? Come on, Israel. Wake up. They shall lay hold. Of the bow in the spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea. And they ride upon horses. Set in array as men for war against thee. O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish has taken hold of us. And pain as a woman in travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way. For the sword of the enemy and the fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee 
with sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes and make thee mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. Ooh, Lord. Come on, Jeremiah. What are you speaking to the United States of America? You did not hearken unto the word, nor kept the law. You rejected it. Some will bring disaster upon these people. Ooh, everybody trying to figure out what's going on. The only thing you have to do is read the word of the most high God. Don't you know history repeats itself? Oh, we are the second exodus. We're just the greater exodus. So come on, decade of declaration. Come on, Noe. How to have a kingdom mindset. Come on, walking out the principles, the instructions of the most high God. We are here now. Wow. Who would have ever thought? Who would have ever thought? I'm so serious. Who would have ever thought? The most high God said, your thoughts ain't my thoughts. As high as the heaven is high, they higher than yours. Tell him, Dr. J, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you thought or even ask for. So I'm thankful for a new year. Hot Samaya, hot Samaya. I am thankful for a new year and to celebrate it with you guys on this encore performance. Oh, you know the Holy Ghost going to step in this thing. You know, ooh, it... It's a decade of declaration. You know he about to tear this word up. I'm about to get on out the way and let the most high God have his way. Woo, most high. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. Woo. You got one word. Bow down. What y'all say? Bow down. I am the one and only most high God. Who Lord. From generation to generation. I am that I am. You better speak those things as though they were not as though they are. You know that the power of life and death is in your tongue. And the most high God spoke the world into existence. The moon, the stars, and the sun is hanging on nothing but the word of the most high God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall stand forever. Don't you add to his word, nor take away from it. Ooh, Lord, we gonna bow down and worship him. I thank you right now, Most High, in this very moment that you are choosing me as your earth and vessel. I, I am truly not sufficient of myself. All sufficiency lies on the inside of you. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yahushua, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Bless you, Doreen. You like a John the Baptist on Facebook Live, girl. You calling them out by their names. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Woo. Most High God is saying to you, well done. My good and faithful servant. Because consistency is what brings the blessing. We can't start walking with the Most High and then fall off. It's your consistency. Ooh, Lord. Thank you, Most High God. Bless you. Bless you and bless you. Oh, Lord. The word says, if two or three gather together in his name, that he would be in the midst. The word says, if two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. Decade of declaration. So, I can't do nothing this morning without this word being established. Come on and speak. Your servant is listening. Through the law, the prophets, 
and the righteous. Ooh, and we got eight people on here. Do you know eight is the number of new beginnings? Y'all better come on and stop playing this morning. Yeah. Thank you, Most High God. Thank you, Most High God. So, the method style of study, it is a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which is I am, that I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah is the Most High God's teachings and instructions and 613 principles. As well, the Creator speaks, Mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavins are identified as the Tanakh. Or as some refer to it, the Old Testament. You better ask for the ancient path. But it's the only book that Yahushua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. Ooh, Lord. Ooh. Let me get there. I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4. In Ezra, the scribes stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for the purpose. And besides him stood Matthion and Shammah and Athia and Yorijai and Hakarint and Messiah on his right hand. Oh Lord. And on his left hand, Pasadia and Mishael and Mishayam and Hashem and Habadiam, Zechariah and Messalam. Oh Lord. Today we look to the word purpose. Hebrews number 6213. I said to do, work, make, produce, to act, act with effect, effect. The Torah testifies. The prophets proclaim. Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 3. If so be they will hearken, what you say? If so be they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of the evil, which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. Uh-huh. The writings bear witness. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. We have completed the method style of study this morning, reviewing purpose. First, we recognize there is a standard set in the Torah, in 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses in the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavins, or identify as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yahushua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. It is the prevailing purpose of the Most High that stands at all times for his people, Israel. What you say? 5 a.m. prayer. It is the prevailing purpose of the Most High that stands all times for his people, Israel. Jeremiah chapter 36 verse 3. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. <clears throat> Shalom, Allah King. Peace be unto you, Father, in prayer community. When we return our thoughts, in ways to his plan and purpose, we find the clear path 
Ask for the ancient path. We find the clear path before us shining on the way we are to go. What you say? Shalom, Allah King. Totally different teaching already. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. When we return our thoughts and ways to the plans and purpose, we find the clear path before us shining on the way we are to go. Stop it, Jeremiah. All right now. So now, are you ready for the word of God? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Are you ready for the word of God? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. This morning we are coming out of the book of Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 in its entirety. Okay, this morning we are coming out of the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 in its entirety and it reads, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up. That which is planted. A time to kill. And a time to heal. A time to break down. And a time to build up. A time to weep. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn. And a time to dance. And a time to laugh. In a time to mourn, in a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, uh-oh, and a time to refrain from embracing. What you say? Can't embrace right now, most high God. Oh, Lord. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rent. And a time to sow. A time to keep silence. And a time to speak. A time to love. And a time to hate. A time of war. And a time of peace. What profit has he. That worketh in that wherein he laboreth. I have seen the travail. Which the most high God has given to the sons of men. To be exercised in it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that the most high God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is a gift from the Most High God. I know that whatsoever the Most High God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And the Most High God doeth it that men should fear before him. That which has been is now what. That which has been is now, and that which is to be already been. What? And the most high God requires that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, the wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my mind, heart, I said in my heart, the most high God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time that for every purpose and for every work, I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that the most high God might be manifest, manifest them, and that they might see 
that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath. So that a man has no preeminence above a beast. For all is vanity. All go into one place. All are, are of the dust and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. For that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? May the most high God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Decade of declaration. Happy New Year 5780 according to Exodus chapter 12. We're going to read that in a little while. How to discover the most high's purpose in your life. What you say? How to discover the most high's purpose in your life. The Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, said to me that 5780 begins the decade of declaration. The Ruach HaKadosh said to me that 5780, oh Lord, begins the decade of declaration. Happy New Year. This is the year of kingdom influence. Ah. Come on, Most High God. This is the year of kingdom influence. That's why you being taught about kingdom citizenship. Because this is the year of kingdom influence. Oh, Lord. Everybody type in the comments. Influence. This is in my heart like a loaded gun. This is the year that is calling for less talk and more action. What you say? This is in my heart like a loaded gun. This is the year that is calling for less talk and more action. This is the year of no more pretending to be in the kingdom. What you say? This is the year to do no more pretending to be in the kingdom. But demonstrating the kingdom. So here's what I want you to focus on today. Write this down. How to become an influence. What you say? Write this down. How to become an influence. I am speaking from authority today in the decade of declaration. I am speaking from authority today. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So listen to me. How do you become an influence? We want to focus today on understanding the secret to influencing the world. Yeah. People don't know that I was born six in line of 12 children to a mother in Queens, New York that later moved to Biloxi, Mississippi at the age of 12. Growing up, I never thought one day what I would be charged with teaching the lost tribes of Israel. How do you become an influence? How do you rise up? Something going on in here. I can't see the words. How do you rise up? Mm -mm. I don't want to click something. Hold on. I got a block right there. Okay. Thank you. How do you rise up from simple 
beginnings. Sometimes you would think, oh, you are not a special person. That's not true. I believe there is what I call a divine decree. Mm -hmm. Every human being was created by the Most High to be an influence in the earth. Yes. Every human being, while most of them die and never influence their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The second decree of influence simply means to dominate life. Anyone who has influence is simply a person who is dominating an environment they are in. Mm -hmm. They have this force that comes with their lives that makes people listen to them or make people respect, honor them, or make people believe them. All of us are influenced by somebody. Huh? All of us are influenced by somebody. In other words, those persons have dominion. Whoever dominates an area of life will have influence on planet Earth. If you look at all the influential people, I'm not talking about just famous because some of them are not influential. They are just famous. Don't confuse fame with influence. What you say? Don't confuse fame with influence. Fame is like a flame. It goes out. Influence is what lasts even after you're dead. Mm -hmm. Case in point. How does the influence of someone like Paris Hilton Compared to the far-reaching influence of Dr. Martin Luther King. There are some things that we may be called to do that are far-reaching influence of not just a nation, but across the whole world. Now that means that your life has so much dominion that even death can't destroy it. This great man, Martin Luther King, doctor, has streets named for him all throughout the country. Listen to me, please. You are not too old to be an influence. Yes. Listen to me, please. You are not too old to be an influence. You were placed in a time to influence your generation. That's why the Most High took you out of eternity and put you in a body because he wanted earth to be influenced by you. And we confuse influence with popularity. <laughs> and we confuse influence with popularity. You know, sometimes you be like, oh, Lord, we don't got four people on. Why that person ain't doing nothing? Got about a thousand views. Right. Sometimes we confuse influence with popularity. Oh, Lord. All right now. Not everyone is popular. Not everyone who is popular will be influential. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the word popular... It's from the root word population, which means that the population likes you for a while and then they'll crucify you later. Huh? As a matter of fact, the word popular comes from the root word population. So they'll like you for a while and then turn around and crucify you later. Oh, Lord. Influential people are not necessarily popular. They are impactful. Ooh, Lord. Yahushua HaMashiach was not popular, but we can't get rid of him. What you say? Yahushua HaMashiach was not popular, but we can't get rid of him. He was influential. I put it 
it to you like this. Then we have to learn what is influence. Here is a statement made by Yahushua concerning you and me who are in the kingdom concerning influence. He said these words in Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto living, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was living. He told them the parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman put a large amount of dough and it worked its way unto the dough until all of the lump was full of yeast. Mm -hmm. This statement is about influence. Come on, kingdom of the most high God. The most high sent you to earth to be an influence. Mm -hmm. Just like yeast influences the dough. Right. What you say? Just like yeast influences the dough. You are born. You are not born just to exist. You were born to make a difference and born to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And I am convinced that the Most High does not want to wait for people just treading water. The Most High is saying, I want you to be an impact and influence in the earth. The Most High put you in time so that you could make this influence. What you say? Mm -hmm. The Most High put you in time so that you could make this influence. Every time, uh-oh, a year begins to change. Happy New Year. Every time a year begins to change, everybody begins to think of this concept of time. There are a few things about time I like to say. Because the passing of a year is the marking of time. Huh? Every time a year begins to change, everybody begins to think of the concept of time. There are a few things about time I would like to say to you. Because the passing of a year is the marking of time. Time is defined as an interruption in eternity. What you say? Time is defined as an interruption mm -hmm. in eternity. Yeah. Now, the Most High doesn't live in time. Say it again, Dr. J. Mm -hmm. Now, the Most High doesn't live in time. But he put us in it. Mm -hmm. What you say? The Most High doesn't live in time, but he put us in it. And the Most High put us in time because it is very difficult to live in eternity. I thank the Most High. I live in time. Let me tell you why. Because whatever is in eternity lasts forever. Yeah. So if you ever had a headache in eternity... How about an eternity with a divorce? Does the pain last forever? Thank the Most High that marriage is only for earth. Huh? Thank the Most High that marriage is only for earth. Luke chapter 20 verse 35. But they said, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Yahushua said that in the afterlife, there is neither marriage nor giving in marriage.
The Most High lives in eternity. And eternity is time without measure. And therefore, we were placed in time for a purpose to fulfill purpose. Uh -huh. And that purpose is to give meaning to our lives. Yeah. We were sent here to make an impact. To make a difference. I didn't realize that until I began to study the Bible. As there is where I <clears throat> discovered something. You are born to influence time. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to live long to influence the planet. Think about the oldest man that ever lived. His name was Methuselah. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 27, and all the days of Methuselah was 960 and 90 years. And he died. Yahushua lived to be 33 and a half years old, and then he died. We can't remember Methuselah, but we can't forget Yahushua. Age, therefore, is not measure of impact. Who know it? Age, therefore, is not a measure of impact. The Most High gave us time so we can live life in what I call phases. What you say? The Most High gave us time so we can live in what I call phases. The Most High gave you a year at a time, mm -hmm. a month at a time, a week at a time, and a day at a time. So you can live life in doses. Yes. I love the way the psalmstress David said in Psalms chapter 118, verse 24, this is the day which the Most High has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Take a look at 5 a.m. prayer. David says, this is the day, not the month, mm -hmm. the day yes. that the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. I will rejoice in it. Yes. The day, what have you done with the last 10 days that I have moved you forward in your purpose? Mm. Huh? The day. What have you done with your last 10 days that have moved you forward in your purpose? How did you spend your last 24 hours? Oh, Lord, sitting on CNN, looking at that coronavirus. Now, is that moving you forward in your purpose? No. No, you're wasting time. Okay. <laughs> and how did that contribute to the progress of your passion in your dream? He gives us life in phases. Purpose is placed in phases because you will never give birth to attach yourself to a phase. Hmm. Let me tell you something. I thank the most high for years. I do. I thank the most high for years because you can now look back and say someone died 10 years ago. Or I had a failure in this area five years ago. Thank the most high for years. Years push things back. Yes. What you say? Years push things back. Years deliver you from memories and the pain of things. Thank the most high for time. Please don't be attached to phases. Never let a phase define you. You know right now you're single. You ain't married. Well, that's only your current phase. Don't get attached to that. And when you get married, you have to shift from that single phase to that married phase. Now you can't go over to a friend house anymore like you used to. Just go over there anytime you feel like it. Not anymore. Now you can't fast for a week because now you got to cook for your spouse or eat with your spouse. You got to be able to be free from phases. 
The Most High has given you a new year, yeah. 5780, to set you free from the old year. <laughs> the Most High has given you a new year to set you free from the old year. All right, now, each phase prepares you for the succeeding phase. Every year that the Most High gives us was supposed to be preparation for the next one. Huh? Every year that the Most High gives us is supposed to be preparation for the next one. The problem is if you didn't know what you were supposed to do in the year that you had, then you are going to... The next one, unprepared or ill prepared. Mm -hmm. That's why the Most High gave you the capacity to think and to plan. I put it to you like this. You must enjoy your phase, but never become your phase. Huh? I put it to you like this. You must enjoy your phase, but never become your phase. Some of you got a good job. Now, let me tell you something. You ain't know what could happen to that company in 5780. Huh. Ooh, all the companies been shut down. Uh-oh, yep. uh-oh. So don't get attached to your job nor your title. And if you find your value in your title, you are in trouble. My <clears throat> Live with your phases loosely. I am so conscious of my phases. Mm -hmm. Write this down. Your phase are still ahead of you. Your phases are still ahead of you. The best ones, okay. So you might have lost your business. That's no problem. There are probably some greater businesses ahead of you. Yeah. Maybe you lost some clients. <clears throat> no problem. There's some clients on the way in 5780 that can triple your income. Don't ever allow the past phases to interfere with the future phases. I can't wait to meet the people I'm supposed to meet right now in 5780. And some of them are coming loaded. But I got to be prepared with a vision for them to pay for it. There's a part that everyone must play in life. Write this down. No phase is forever. Say it. No phase is forever. Say it out loud. No phase is forever. Some of you are having a good time, right? Yeah. You had a good 5779. Seven, yeah. I'll never forget some advice that was given to me. Expect the best mm -hmm. and prepare for the worst. My Lord. That means have a good attitude, but don't be stupid. Okay. Whatever you going through right now, mm -hmm. I guarantee will not last. You right. Whatever you're going through right now, I guarantee it won't last. That includes the bad times. The good time. Yeah. There's a time when your business is up mm -hmm. and everybody is happy. Yep. Profits. And then in 5779, it feels like every demonic attack mm. is headed towards your business. And you're going into a new year behind the eight ball. Ooh, most high, you better teach this thing. Yeah. Now you are thinking. Most high, should I fold up or hang in there? There is going to be a change 
in the next phase that's going to triple your income compared to what you had in 5778. This is just a phase. Yeah. Some of your marriages went through hell and some of them are still hanging in on by the thread. The Most High said, don't get a divorce. The phase is going to change. Mm. She is going to catch herself in April. He's going to get himself back on track in June. Don't leave him yet. I'm going to make him a teacher of the Torah. Don't attach or don't be attached to phases. I have come to understand that everything is just a season. What you say? Oh, that's easy to say if you're not in it. I have come to understand yeah. that everything is just a season. Mm -hmm. Oh, please remember, this is long as you live. Ecclesiastics chapter 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. How many things got a season? There, this is very serious. That means if you got a lot of money, that's a season. So what you're doing to get a lot of money is you give a lot and plant a lot of seeds. So that when you, so that when your lean times come, you got a harvest to come in from somewhere. Hallelujah. Be generous yeah. in your hard times mm -hmm. and in your good times so you could survive the drought of life. Everything comes in seasons. Mm -hmm. Relationships go through seasons. Everything, your job is doing good right now. In 5778 was a good time on your job. Mm -hmm. Everybody was getting promoted. You were happy and praised the most high. Wait until 5779. Another season. There is a demonic force on your job. Yeah. You still got to show up and you got to handle that season. What I love about that verse is that nothing lasts. That's hope. Mm -hmm. Praise the most high. So right now, you got a mortgage. That's a season. There's going to be a time and you're going to be able to burn the note and run around the whole block shouting, free at last, free at last. So phases, according to Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verse 10, I have seen the burden the Most High God has laid on the human race. It says, I have seen the burden the Most High placed on man. Mm -hmm. What's his burden? He makes everything perfect in its time. Yeah. There's a time for you to mature in every area. And the timing is set by the Most High. It says he also has placed in the heart of man eternity. And yet they cannot fathom or understand what the Most High has done for the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. We live in continual of time. Yes. And don't understand phases. I want to recommend something to you. What's your past? It's dangerous. You are about to say goodbye to the past. Please let it go. Let 5779 stay in the past. Ooh. The past is a portion of your future. Oh. It is not your future. My Lord. Say it again. The past is a portion of your future. Yeah. It's not your future. I will put it another way. Okay. The past is dead except for the life you give it. Oh, wow. You keep resurrecting uh -oh. 5779 and not let it die. Mm. People who hurt you, things that didn't work out, 
or goals that you didn't achieve, places that you didn't go to, even people who didn't treat you right. The Most High doesn't want you to take that into what awaits you in 5780, the new year, the decade of declaration. Your past is as alive as the life you give it. What you say? Your past is as alive as the pace, as the life you give it. Yes. I put it another way. Okay. You cannot go to your future if you live in the past. Huh? You cannot go to your future if you live in their past. Therefore, you cannot change the past. But you can plan for your future. Okay. This is the moment in time when most people are thinking about, what am I going to do? The future gives hope to the past. And that's why. I only use the past for educational references. Hmm. It is never my habitation. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody fails. Everybody falls. Everybody doesn't seem to achieve everything. But you don't live in that. Learn how to let the past go. Because the past can become a weight. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. Not as though I had already obtained, okay. either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Hamashiach Yahushua. Brethren, 5 a.m. prayer. I count not myself to have apprehended, okay. but this one thing I do, what? forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Brothers, yes. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, Paul the apostle says, I forget the past. Oh, Lord. Forgetting puts the past behind us. Say it again. Forgetting puts the past behind us. While we are straining towards what's ahead of me, I press towards the goal to win the prize for which the Most High has called me heavenward in Hamashiach. You have not done everything you want to do. Yet, and maybe there's some memories you would love to forget. Mm. Well, forget them and move on and achieve greatness. There are some people you need to forget. Say it again, Dr. J. There are some people you need to forget. I'm going to say that again because somebody needs to hear this. There are some people you need to forget. And leave them in 5779 and go on your own. Learn some new people. I trust your heart will hear this. I call it the power of your future. Mm. What you say? Mm -hmm. I call this the power of your future. Your future is not ahead of you. It's trapped within you. And this is why your future has very little to do with other people in the sense that you don't get your future from them. You are like a seed. You possess your future. Now in every mango seed, as a mango tree, the mango tree's future is in the mango seed. So the Most High has made you the same way. Your future is in you and you are taking it into 5780. Yeah. Therefore, I put it to you like this. The Most High is committed to the future 
he placed in your presence. Oh, Lord. This is why I have so much confidence in my life when things don't even look like they're working. I'm always at peace because the most high's commitment to me is what keeps me full of hope and faith. The most high is committed to the vision he put in your life. And therefore, whether other people help you or not, the most high will be your helper. Your future is more than your past. And therefore, your future is more valuable than your past. Yes. Let's look back. Learn some lessons and shut the door. Come on, 5780. Decade of declaration. Let's look back. Learn some lessons. And shut the door. Ooh, Lord. Hallelujah. 5 a.m. prayer. Uh -huh. Let's go forward. Your future is more important than your past. And that is why Yahushua died to forgive you. Not to reclaim your past, but to protect your future. Yeah. He forgives your past and just forgives it and forget it. But it's your future that he came to redeem. And that's why you must come to Hamashiach. Not because you want to become religious a religious person and become a part of some religion organization. You want to come back. To the most high. Because he deposited in you a future that only he could bring to pass. My Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Uh-uh. He forgives your past. He just forgives it and forgets it. But your future that he came to redeem. And that's why you must come to Hamashiach. Not because you want to become a religious person and become part of some religious organization. You want to come back to the most high because he deposited in you a future that only he could bring to pass. I am so excited about my life. My future is secure in the one who gave me the deposit. My future is secured in the one that gave me the deposit. My bonus is just getting started. What you say, Doreen? My bonus is just getting started. In 5780, I'm going to be a reckless woman. I'm going to believe for so many big things in my life because the Most High has been my helper. I put it to you like this. He would be your helper too. I say he would be your helper, your savior, the most high going to help you through things you cannot go through by yourself. Uh. Hallelujah. Your future is concealed just like a tree is concealed in the seed. Yeah. What you say? Your future is concealed just like the seed is concealed in the tree. Oh Lord. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 45. I love this verse. I'll never forget it. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 5. I am the most high. And there is none else. There is no most high besides me. I girded thee. Though thou hast not known me. The most high. There's none like me. Why? Because I'm the only most high who makes known the end from the beginning. In other words, I tell you what is yet to come even before it comes. In other words, I tell you what is yet to come before it even comes. Oh, Lord. I place your past into my past. Huh? I place your past into my past. In other words, your future is the most high's past. Oh, no. 
forward. What'd you say? In other words, your future is the most high's past. Glory. The most high has already finished. What you say? The most high has already finished. He started with the end and then began after he ended. Huh? He started with the end and then began after he ended. Oh, Lord. Look at that verse. He says he placed the end before the beginning. The most highs not wondering about your future. Before a start got started. I'm going to say it again. Before a start got started. Yep. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. The most high is not wondering about your future. The Most High already been in 5780 and knows exactly what happened to you. That's why he knows your months. Oh my goodness. The Most High has already been in 5780. And he knows exactly what happened to you. That's why he knows your months. I am so secure in him. I call it the race to the end. Mm -hmm. How do you get to the end that the most high already finished inside of your life? Yes. What you say? I am secure in him. I call it the race to the end. How do you get to the end that the Most High has already finished inside of your life. Well, the most important thing in life on earth is to make it your future. And a lot of people won't make it to their future. The race to your future is a marathon, not a sprint. The race to your future is a marathon. Not a sprint. 5 a.m. prayer. Throw this up in the comments for your neighbors. Tell something. If you try to speed up the most highs program for your life, mm -hmm. you will short circuit and cause premature birth. Take your time and keep moving. ever want to be ahead of the most high but you don't want to be behind him so far that you lose sight of him here's what the bible says about it ecclesiastics chapter 9 verse 11 i have seen something else under the sun the race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. To the end, your future and your success is related to the most high success. One of the things that made me bold was when I discovered that if I failed, it's bad for the most high. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. If I fail, it's bad for the most high's reputation. So I have to come to understand, like Moses told the most high many times, he said the most high being far from you to do such a thing. For you told the people that we are your people. In other words, success is tied to your reputation. Huh. The most high. You have to help me succeed. So you're going to embrace yourself. 
You know what I mean? Most people think that if I fail, I'm going to embarrass myself. No. The Most High says, this is about me. You will succeed in 5780 because the Most High will protect his name. Yes. What you say? Mm -hmm. You will succeed in 5780 because the Most High will protect his name. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Yes. His plans for you already are finished. Listen to me. His plans for you already are are finished. The most high's plan for you to succeed, he's already planned for it. Your success determined his success. Yes. I have come to appreciate Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you. Yes. Declares the most high God. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. The Most High has a future. Oh, Lord. The Most High has a plan for your future. And a plan to make sure that you get there. Yes. Oh, Lord. You are not just. A baby born wandering through the earth. And this is why when a young person doesn't know the most high's plan for their lives, they waste their time and energy in areas that are not helpful. I suggest that the key to the future is trapped inside of the most high. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. In him we were also chosen. What? In him we were also chosen. Having been predestined. According to the plan of him. Who works out everything in conformality with the purpose of his will. The most high says I have a plan for your life. I also have a destiny for your life. And the plan will take you to your destiny. Oh, come on. Happy New Year 5780. I also have a destiny for your life. And the plan will take you to your destiny. But look at that statement carefully. It says in him. We also have been chosen, having been predestined according to the plan. Mm. Oh, y'all sit right there for a second. Selah, yeah, Doreen, fire! Hallelujah. But look at that statement carefully. It says in him, we also have been chosen, having been predestined, According to the plan. The word predestined comes from the word pre. Oh, Lord. And it's actually a grammatical construct. The prefix pre means before and destiny means the end. Oh, Lord. What you say? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. The prefix pre means before and destiny means the end. Predestined before destiny the end. What y'all say? The Most High said, I set your end before I began you. Huh? The Most High said, I set your end. Before I began you. But then he says. There's also a plan. Okay. According to that plan. It is supposed to get you there. The most high doesn't only have your future established. What you say? The most high doesn't only have your future established. He has a way to get you there. But look at the next statement. He says, but if you mess up the plan, 
I will still conform your mess to get you back in line with my will, no matter how you fail. What you say? But look at the next statement. Yes. He says, but if you mess up the plan, Dr. J, uh -huh. I will still conform your mess to get you back in line with my will, no matter how you fail. He'll use your failure as a testimony wow. and get you back on the road. Let's conform that now and get you get your act together. Rededicate your life to me. Let's get back on the road. Because you're wasting time with people who ain't worth your time. Uh -oh. Huh? Because you're wasting time with people who ain't worth your time. He will conform even your failures to his plan for your life. This is why the Most High can take your mess and turn it into a miracle. He could take your test and turn it into a testimony. He can cause all of the things that you've done wrong to become a witness of his greatness. Oh, Lord. He can take all of the things that you've done wrong to become a witness to his greatness. Because... You have failed. Please don't stay away from the most high. Come back to the most high. I put it to you like this. That purpose is permanent. And that's why the most high never gives up on you. Hmm. I'll put it to you like this. Yes. You can mess up all you want to. Purpose is permanent. That's why the Most High will never give up on you. Mm. Plans may change, but purpose is permanent. Because purpose is more powerful than problems. Purpose overcomes your mistakes. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and 29 and we know that in all things the most high works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose for those the most high foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters the most high says no matter what you've done i will still restore your purpose your destiny for your life I put it in you, then this is probably one of the greatest verses I've ever read. Job chapter 8, verse 7. Your beginnings will seem humbled. So prosperous will your future be. Your greatness, 5 a.m. prayer. It's trapped in your littleness. What you say? Yes. Your greatness, 5 a.m. prayer, is trapped in your littleness. Your humble beginnings qualifies you for a great ending. If you humble yourself, then the Most High God will lift you up. Your humble beginnings qualifies you for a great ending. As a matter of fact, he says, I like this. You know, he says, your beginnings seem humble. In other words, if they knew how great you were, They'll take you out to lunch tomorrow. You just seem like you ain't nothing, nobody right now. Look at the word seem. You seem like you ain't got nothing. Let me tell you something. Okay. You ain't 
your friends until you get plenty, you know. People don't look and seek out poor people. When they think you got money, they want to be your friend right away. Mm. Isn't that something? Tell your neighbor, you're not rich, so you better seek me now. Oh, I'm not rich, so you better seek me now. Uh -huh. Be nice to me now. Nice. Don't ignore me. Ugh, can't shake my hand. Shake my hand now. <laughs> Tell them to remember me when you're coming into your glory. Mm -hmm. You never know who you are talking to. The Most High may be positioning you like Joseph to take care of your family. They didn't know who he was. You may have the same plan placed on your life by the Most High. What you're going through now, you are going right through it. What you're going through now, you are going right through it. You what? And they are going to be shocked. And you come out on the other side. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they don't know who you are yet. You're passing through. Some of you are sick. Now, but healing is on the other side of this thing. You're going to walk out of here, heal in Yahushua name. Yeah. You are sitting next to a testimony. Look at Psalms chapter 37, verse 37. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. A future awaits those who seek peace. Because sometimes when you live upright, things go wrong. That's okay. Stay upright. That's a future for you. You may say, phone going off. I was doing good. Until I became a citizen of the kingdom. All of a sudden, everything started going bad. The Most High says that it is supposed to happen. Those that live like the Most High and Hamashiach, Yahushua, shall suffer persecution. So since you changed kingdoms, come on, y'all. So since you've changed kingdoms, there's going to be a little fight. You're going to lose a little bit. He said, but there's still a future for you. And they shouldn't laugh until the game is over. I know you are broke, but that's a temporary state. Listen, I'm going to be nice to you now because at the end of 5780, you can have so much money. The next verse says, put the wicked... And the sinner man seems to be doing good, but they can be cut off. There are some people, you, who you know, and they weren't living right. But they was loaded and you are living right and was broke. As time goes on, you find out that somebody else is sending their money. <clears throat> spending their money. And you still living good and you just coming up slowly, you rise to the top. Look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. And their human, and their hearts, human plan their course, but the most high establishes their steps. Psalms chapter 20, verse 4. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Psalms chapter 37, verse 4. Take delight in the Most High and he will give you the desires of your heart. I know that my Redeemer is faithful. Come on, Marie. I know that my Redeemer is faithful. He said that if I stay delightful in him, he will cause my plans to succeed. Yes. I know my Redeemer is faithful. He says if I stay delightful in him, he will cause my plans to succeed. 
Make 5780 the year of delight. We gonna make a decade of declaration. I will delight myself in the most high God. Come on, y'all. I will delight myself in the most high God. And he will cause my plans to succeed because I delight myself in him. Mm -hmm. Woo. Put down those other books and pick up the Bible. As you read the book until you begin to enjoy the Most High, he's not boring. You are boring. The Most High owns the whole universe and you ain't nothing. You might as well keep company with the Most High. Make your delight in the Most High. Learn to enjoy the Most High. Read his book until you know his face. Stop making those resolutions. What you say? Stop making those New Year's resolutions. You gonna lose weight. Well, make better use of our time reading the whole Bible. You may find once you start it, it will use up so much of your time that you stop eating. Uh-oh. <laughs> Put this in the comments. Okay. The power of a season. I want you to get this down. The power of a season. I want you to get this down. This is important. The turn of a new season brings opportunity to begin again. Yeah. What you say? The turn of a new season gives the opportunity to begin again. That's why the Most High gives us years so we can begin again. Yes. He's so good to us. That's why the Most High gives us years so we could begin again. This is why it's so crucial to understand what a new season is. For a new season provides incentives to recommit to the things you value. What's valuable to you? That's a question. What's valuable to you? Think about it. What do you value? Make a list today and say the most high in 5780 will be the year that I get back to the important things. Yeah. Like prayer time and reading the word. A new season presents us with the opportunity to reposition ourselves for greater success. It's time to reposition yourself for greater success. Reposition yourself means that you recognize and restructure what's important to you. That's what I have been doing all my life. Every year I would check my favorite goals, which are my purpose in life, and make sure my life is realigned with them again. Because when it's over, the most high is not going to ask you what you do. For other people. Huh. He asks you. What did you do. For him. Yes. I have been conscious. Constantly. Of the value of my life. And my time. This is why learning the secret to influence. Is so crucial. This is probably the most important thing. I'm going to give you. Here it is. The secret. To success. I figured it out. I know how to be successful. This is how you become successful. The greatest enemy of success is your fear of failure. What you say? The greatest enemy of success is the enemy of success is your fear of Failure. I figured something out. Years ago, if you're going to fail, fail big. My Lord. What you say? I figured something out years ago. 
If you're going to fail, fail big. Oh, Lord. I know they talk about taking it slow. But if you go, go for the pure goal. Listen, if you fail small, they can laugh at you anyhow. So fail big time. Try something big. Guess what? I figured it out. Because after you die, they can't get the payment. You spent a whole year trying to decide to do something. And the year is already gone. Actually, another one is about to start. And you're going to sit there trying to decide what to do. By the time you calculate what they think, the time is gone. Success is the potential destiny of all created things. What you say? Success is the potential destiny of all created things. I discovered something about success. The greatest enemy of progress is your last success. You can become so proud of what you accomplished that you stop moving ahead to what you could accomplish. This is why I'm so nervous about accolades and applauses and all about all these different awards. I'm nervous about it because you can become distracted by that stuff. It can stop you from progressing. See, I discovered the world is an amazing place. The world is so average, it doesn't take much to be a genius. Just do a little extra. The world is so mediocrity, you can't believe none of the awards. Listen, if a guy ain't doing nothing, nothing, and you finally did something, you think you did everything. So you got to... Not measure success by what other people tell you. Yeah. Matter of fact, here's what I call success. is the completion and the fulfillment of the original intent or purpose for your life. That is success. Wow. Say it again, Dr. J. Matter of fact, here is what I call success. It is the completion and the fulfillment of the original intent or purpose for your life. That is success. Yeah. Did you know what the Most High assigned you to do this year? Are you moving forward or towards the goal that he gave you? I suggest to you another thought. Okay. How do you bridge your success? Success is measured by purpose when it's fulfilled. Oh, Lord. Success is not measured by what you've done compared to what others have done. Success is measured by what you've done compared to what you knew you could have done. Oh, my goodness. So, you are the measure of your own success. Yeah. What? So you are the measure of your own success. Only you knew how good you could have done. And the average person will always think you did great. If you did a little bit better than they did. But you would know that you did poorly when you compare to what you know you could have done. You know we do that. Yeah. So your success is never mentioned by other people, nor by their measure, but by what the Most High showed you that you can do, and you didn't do it. That's why I am constantly comparing myself with myself. Mm -hmm. What you say, Doreen? That's why I'm constantly comparing myself with myself. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. We do not dare to classify 
or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. Yeah. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Do you see what Paul was talking about, Father, in prayer? Because only you know how great you can become. Yeah. Never allow anybody, nobody afterwards to stop you from going forward. Don't worry about the awards, certificates, or degrees. You are working for a purpose. And people observe you and think they, and they think you're doing great. When in reality, you know, <laughs> you're not doing great. <laughs> Compared to what you know you want to do. Yeah. Can I put it this way? What's the key to success? The key to success is not to pursue success. Uh -huh. What you say? The key to success is not to pursue success. Okay. If you want to be successful in this new year, how do you become successful? Seek to become a person of value and that's it. Ha! Seek to become a person of value and that's it. It's that simple. And that's not difficult. If you want to be successful in life, Seek to become a person of value. In other words, you must become a person of value. When you discover your unique gift and you make your significant contributions to the world. As a matter of fact, you become significant when you develop, refine, and serve your gift to the world. What you say? You become significant. When you refine, discover, develop, and serve your gift to the world. Yeah. He showed me this years ago. Value equals worth. This is very important. Listen to me. Okay. Because your career will not make you wealthy. If you're going to become successful and you want to become great and be an influence in life, don't seek greatness. Don't seek influence. Don't seek success. Seek value because value is equal to worth. Wow. The more valuable a thing becomes, the more it is worth. Are you listening to me? Why do you think you spend so much money on diamonds? Diamonds are considered valuable. Therefore, they are worth more than that plastic stuff called costume jewelry. Listen carefully. Why is oil so valuable? Because it is so rare. Its worth keeps rising. It's in demand. You are worth what you are valued. I gave you one of the greatest secrets in life for this next year. You are worth what you are valued. So if you ain't valued much to a job, they pay you less. How do you get paid more? You gotta increase your value to the company. Ain't no mystery to life. You increase your value to a company by secret. First of all, you do it by becoming unique. How do you become unique? Easy. By, by coming significant. Becoming. Easy. By becoming significant. Or do you become significant? How do you become significant? By becoming rare. Listen to me. When you become rare, they come to find you. Huh? When you become rare, they come to find you. Oh, Lord. That's why you dig. 
for diamonds. That's why you dig for oil. That's why you dig for silver. That's why you go diving for pearls. Why? When you are rare, they have to come and find. And then they put a heavy price on you. Are you rare or are you just one of the crew? Are you just one of the crew? How do you become rare? This is very important. You become rare by refining your gift. Indeed. Huh? You become rare by refining your gift. That means you work at it. And you work at it. And you work at it. And you work at it. Until it becomes so refined, it becomes rare. It becomes greater and brighter than all the others. If everybody is selling shoes, you have to find a way to sell the kind of shoe that nobody else sells. If you go into the shoe business, don't just sell Shoes. Everybody is selling shoes. Sell shoes only for infants. Mm -hmm. Now you're rare. They'll find you. I can charge for that idea. You have to find a certain thing you want. Sometimes so unique that they'll find you. You know McDonald's is the only Big Mac restaurant. Now, everybody sells fries. Mm -hmm. Everybody sells chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. But if you want a Big Mac, you have to go to McDonald's. Yep. You have to find your rare uniqueness. You know what's wrong with us? Everybody's name is Jack or Jacqueline. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know what's wrong with us? What? Everybody's name is Jack or Jacqueline. Come on, say it with me. Jack of all trades and mastering nothing. You have to master something. Throw this up in the comments. You will refine what you invest in. Huh? You will refine what you invest in. That means you want to develop and refine your gift. You have spent more money on books related to your gift and start reading them. Shut the TV off and refine your gift. You have to now change your friends and start keeping up with people who can refine your gift. Invest in friends. Then you have to change your association and join with ones that help refine your gift. You have to invest in your gift. You spend all day watching TV and you wonder why you are broke and no one is looking for you. And you only getting paid 20 bucks a month. It's because you're not rare. <laughs> it's because... You are not rare. The Most High sent me to tell you he's tired of you being mediocre. He's tired of you just getting paid a salary. He wants them to look and seek you out. He wants them to beg you to stay when you plan to resign. Yeah. Matter of fact, Here's a test. I want to see how rare you are. Resign on Tuesday. See what they say. Now, if they say, thank the most high she gone, now you know you in trouble. That means you aren't valuable anymore. You never were. You were a nuisance. All right. Type this last thing in the comments. You become valuable when you specialize. 
write it in the comments. I become valuable when I specialize. This sounds so simple, but people still don't get it. Huh? This sounds so simple, but people still don't get it. To specialize means something you have to go. Sometimes you have to go by yourself. To specialize means sometimes you have to go by yourself. Take your own evening courses. Take your own online courses. You have to go for it. Why? Don't worry about them folks who are laughing at you. You are refining yourself. Build on certain principles for globalization. Do something unique. Otherwise, you will not become valuable. Put this in the comments. What lies within you is greater than what lies ahead of you. Say it again, Dr. J. What lies within me is greater than what lies ahead of me. You possess the hidden value of your life right now. It's trapped in you. I will not tell you what I am worth an hour. Say it again, Dr. J. I will not tell you what I am worth an hour. I will not because you'll be jealous of me. But my value came from focus. I refined myself. This past year, I read eight books on leadership. Huh? This past year, I read eight books on leadership. How many books on development did you read last year? Hello, somebody. How many books on development did you read last year? So the Gulf Coast called me and will pay me to come. Why? I refined my gift while you are watching Lifetime. Lifetime is a drug. It's causing you to lose value. You should be reading while you're watching that. They will pay you based on your investment in yourself. How do you locate your power? The power of your investment. It is in this verse. Noun unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above far beyond all that you ever ask or think what's this according to the power it's not in heaven it's not in angels it's not even in yahushua it's in you yes. you came here loaded but it's trapped power it's untapped Refine this. It's hidden value. Make this year 5780 of refining your gift to become valuable. Say it again. Make this the year 5780 of refining your gift to become valuable. Matter of fact, here's a challenge. I want to challenge you to never confuse your work with your job again. What you say? I want to challenge you to never confuse your work with your job again. Your job is what you were trained to do. But your work is what you was born to do. What were you born to do is your seed of greatness. Therefore, your work, what you were born to do, and your job is just your career. Your work is your assignment. Your career and your retire from it. Your job is a skill, but your work is a gift. Ask the guy sitting next to you, how long have you been working? but still struggling to pay your mortgage, still trying to make in meets. I'm telling you something. If you don't capture your gift, you'll be trapped in a job. If you're trapped 
in your job, I guarantee your retirement will not help you survive. Mm. People will look for you based on your gifts, not your looks. Say it again. People will look for you based on your gifts, not your looks. You can never retire from your work. Say it again, Dr. J. You can never retire from your work, but you can retire from your job because your job prepares you for your work. Who know it? Type this in the comments. Your job can become your work. A job is someone paying you to refine your gift. Who know it? I'm going to say that again. Don't be afraid of jobs. Embrace jobs. But use the job opportunity to refine your gift and let them pay you to refine it. Yeah. You were never designed by the most high to survive off of your job. It's your gift that makes you valuable. What do you bring to the job that's unique? You get paid for the problems you solve. The more sophisticated the problem you solve, the higher your value. Therefore, you got to keep upgrading yourself. Don't wait for people to send you to school. I have to keep refining my gift. And the more I feed my gift, the higher my value. And therefore, the greater the harvest in my life. What are you going to spend your money on this year? Type this in the comments. Your goal in life is not to be employed. What you say? Your goal in life is not to be employed. Yeah. Your goal in life is to be deployed. And to deploy means that you prepare your gift to serve the world. Ah. Employment prepares you for deployment. Yeah. Make yourself so valuable that they don't want you to leave. Deployment activates your gift and energizes your life. Deployment is the use and the serving of your natural gift to the world. I promise you, if you discover and work on your gift this year, your value will go up and your income will go up and you'll find people looking for you. Huh. A man's gift makes room for him in the world and will bring him to great men. What you say, Mosa? A man's gifts makes room for him in the world. And will bring him before great men. Yeah. I kept refining my gift. And they called me a cult. I kept working when they called me a demon. I kept on singing. There's a price to refine your gift. First of all, you were created to influence the world. Do you agree with that? You better because it's true. Your gift is your key to influence. If you don't influence, you will always be influenced. Mm -hmm. What you say? If you don't influence, you will always be influenced. The purpose for your birth was to find and deliver your gift of influence to us. Mm -hmm. What is the key to your influence? I have discovered there are seven things that influence life. Write them down. If you're going to influence the Bahamas, America, Jamaica, or Canada, or Aurora, there are six specific things I discovered that makes people influential. Number one, wealth. If you don't have any wealth or riches, then you don't have any influence. Mm -hmm. Number two, knowledge. The person with the most knowledge in an area has 
the most influence. Number three, ownership. If you own a lot of property, you have influence. Yeah. Number four, power. Whoever has power has influence. Number five, people. The more people that listen to you, the more influence you have. It's called people power. Therefore, you need to develop your gift to the point where a lot of people want it. And whenever they want your gift, then you become influential in the world. Number six, specialization. Anyone who specializes has influence. Number six, creates all the other six. If you specialize in something, it'll attract wealth. And you have knowledge in that area, therefore, you can buy any property. When you get money, and the more property you get, then the more control. And when you control things, now you got power to influence politics. When you influence through politics with power, then people honor you and they listen to what you say. But you have to specialize. Specialize and you become influential. How do we become specialized? Here's the key. The key to influence is specialization. You will create it with the seed of influence on the inside. You will never get your greatness from education. Education cannot give you a seed. Education can only refine the seed you have. That's why it's important to know your seed so that you can take the right education. Your seed is in you. I learned from somebody else, but the way I release what I have learned is under my unique gift. Refine your fruit and they'll find you. It is the year of influence. It is the year of influence. You have to find your gift. Refine your gift and they'll come and find you. When you want a mango, you have to go to the mango tree. How does a mango tree become a tree? I discovered the secret here. Paul says you have to forget some things. Yeah. Paul said you have to forget some things. The most high created you in his own image. The most high blessed you and the most high said unto you, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish, and subdue, and then what? Have dominion over the earth. Now the Most High gave us three secrets. First of all, he said, be fruitful. Listen to me. The Most High never said be seedful. It is impossible to be fruitful unless you already have seed because seed brings forth fruit. Come on, Most High God. The Most High never told man to be seedful. He already presumed that the man had seed. The first act of the most high is to be fruitful which means that you have to produce something yeah. oh lord number two is multiply mm -hmm. multiply means you reproduce what you produce yeah. what you say multiply means you reproduce what you produce then it says replenish replenish means to distribute. Then it says to replenish. Yes. Replenish means to distribute. Then the word subdue means to dominate the area of your gift. Bill Gates did this so effectively that he caused the entire government of America to come against him. Bill Gates produced a fruit. Microsoft Microsoft software. Then he multiplied it. And then he distributed it. Then he replenished it until he was able to subdue the market and control all the systems. He followed the most high's plan. Whoever dominates influences. Inside of you is a fruit 
trap in a seed that you carry. That seed must bring forth the fruit that's carrying your fruit. And then you must multiply your fruit so we can begin to distribute it. Then subdue your area of gifting so you become known for something. What are you known for? If the answer is not one thing, you've got a lot of work to do. When I call some names like Michael Jordan, what comes to mind? Tiger Woods, Oprah Winfrey. Let's call your name, Dr. J. Purpose is what you are known for. Work on something so hard that it becomes your name. You will never find a mango tree trying to bring forth oranges. They stay with their seed. You would never find a coconut tree trying to bring forth mangoes. The key to bringing forth your fruit in this generation, number one, the seed must first be in the right environment. Are you in the right environment? Choose. Your associates. Say it again. Mm -hmm. Choose your associates. The seed has to be placed in the right environment. Number two, isolation. Shut it down, Aurora, Colorado. Shut it down. Hallelujah. Number two, isolation. If you're going to become great, you have to isolate yourself from friends. Mm -hmm. For a seed to become a tree, it must be taken away from the earth and hidden under the ground. Yeah. When they ask you, where have you been? Tell them, I've been reading and you're in isolation. Stay at home, shelter in place. What you say? Oh, there's a shelter in place. Hallelujah. You are germinating. That's number three. You have to die. Every single seed must die. To die means self-discipline. What you say? Every single seed has to die. To die means self-discipline. You die to old friends. Bye. Mm -hmm. Old habits. Mm -hmm. Bye. Old associations. Cut them off. Why? I am going to develop myself. A seed will not become a tree until it dies. Number four, every seed must germinate. Germina germination means you motivate yourself from a source. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You have to find people who motivate you. Uh -huh. What you say? You have to find people that motivate you. You have to be around people who dream big, mm -hmm. think big, believe big. Let them germinate you. Number five is crucial. You have to water the seed. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Number five is crucial. You have to water the seed. Water means that you constantly develop a program to manage your development that makes you develop a program. Huh? Hmm. Join organizations. Put yourself on a reading program. That's a watering program. Number six is crucial. Fertilizer. That means you have to refine and refresh your program to constantly grow yourself. Yeah. Come on, 5780, decade of declaration. You got to do something. It's time for action. Mm -hmm. Some people are position, excuse me. Some people are poison and they are pollution in your life. I'm going to say it again. Some people are poison and they are pollution in your life. You need fertilizer. You don't need pollution. Mm -hmm. May the Most High give us the wisdom to stop keeping bad company. I'm so serious. May the Most High give us the wisdom to stop keeping bad company. Yes. There are people who add to you, subtract from you, multiply 
you or divide you. You have to choose the ones who add to you and multiply you and avoid the ones who divide and subtract from you. Number seven, you need some sunshine. What you say? You need sunshine. If you want to develop these fruit trees, you need special networking. That means you begin to network with organizations and people who become your light. That's especially the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, and professional people who can lead you to higher ground. Number eight, this one, you ain't gonna like it. <clears throat> Number eight, this one, you not gonna like it. This one is pruning. Ah, oh, Lord. Remind me of uh, Janae the other day. She has this beautiful plant and some of the leaves on the bottom. And she said she don't know why the ones closer to the bottom, they keep dying. But they say when you take it off, it helps the plant to grow. I said, girl, that's called pruning. Who, oh, Lord. This one is called pruning. If you are going to develop your fruit... There will be pruning. Pruning means you have to cut off some people. Cut off some behaviors. Cut off some habits. Cut off some practices. Cut off some situations. You have to cut off some opportunities. Number nine. And this one is so important time. When you put a seed in the ground, you can't force it to grow. It takes time. If you're going to make and maximize five, seven, eight, zero, the decade of declaration as your best year, you're going to have to use your time wisely. And don't rush it. You have to accept the process. The process is necessary for purpose to be fulfilled. Your process takes time. You can't rush success, but you can guarantee it. The last one. Type this in the comments in all caps. Patience. Everybody type in the comments in all capital letters, patience. You know, when you start working with a tree and you plant a seed, you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. You wonder why you're not growing? Patience. Yeah. All trees need patience. One thing with the tree, though, when you see it finished, big, stately, and strong. It just stands there. Yep. The wind blows. The water beats it. Hurricanes come. And it just stands there. Because of number 10. Patience. Reconnect to what makes you influential. 5780 is the year of influence. So I challenge you to organize yourself. Prioritize your life and then discipline your life. First, ask the Most High to show you your gift, your strength, your unique gift. In your place of humble beginnings, it qualifies you for greatness. It doesn't matter where you were born. It's what you were born with. We want to organize our lives, prioritize our lives, and the Most High will give us the power to discipline our lives, to die for something. Amen, 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 and amen. Happy New Year, Decade of Declaration, 5780. It's time for you to do something. Playing from S's iPhone.
Amen. Just amen. I think the second time, the encore, you know, I, I'm like, we already did this, but so much stuff came out on this day till I'm just like so amazed right now. Bless you, Doreen, Erica, Marie, Gina was in here. Everyone that's still in here, bless you. It is a new year. And so a lot of times, you know, we'll just start saying stuff and doing stuff because somebody told us, right? But if you're not going by the word of the most high God, don't be following people. So I'm about to prove to you that today, March 26, is a new year, according to scripture. So Exodus chapter 12, and I want y'all to read it for yourself today, because I don't just be telling y'all stuff. I'm going line upon line, precept upon precept. So all these different new years that people celebrate, I don't know what they're doing. I'm going by the word. Okay, so I'm, I'm about to show you why that we are sitting on a new year. All right, Exodus chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginnings of months. It shall be the first of the year to you. Now, now, I'm, I'm going to keep reading, y'all, because it's about to set you on fire, because you're going to realize right now, you are sitting in the same place as the children of Israel. We are quarantined in our houses. There's a shutdown going on, but because we are in covenant with the Most High God, and we don't serve the pagan gods of this world, we been got rid of our idols, and the blood is on the doorpost. Listen to me. This month shall be unto you. The beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man according to the house of the fathers, a lamb of for a house. So look at this. He gave them the new year first. Then he said on the 10th day. So if you count from today, 10 days to Passover, this is the new year. Oh my goodness. Come on now. I'm going to keep reading. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And it, and ye shall keep it until the what? The 14th day of the same month. Oh, Lord, 14 days. Come on, Passover. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood. Come on, most high God. We're sitting in the same place. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of their house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs and they shall eat it. Eat it not raw of it, nor sudden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the penance thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and ye shall eat it with haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Amen, 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 and amen. Happy New Year, hot Samaya. We are in the same place as the children of Israel. That should light a fire under you right now. So get to the blog spot, 
Get to Facebook. Get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural day five. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Okay, girl, go shut up. Hallelujah.